vocational training if there was this enhanced certainty that there will be a there will be a, uh, a repayment and with a reasonable return and so forth. Uh, so, so we, you know, basically what I'm saying is there's a world of need out there and there's a world of finance out here. They need to sit and come up with innovations one after the other. Uh, and this is just one example. At the back. Mr. Mahajan. I mean, the whole of uh, the carbon credits market, the key factor really was that you're putting a price, uh, a financial price, on carbon credits. So effectively creating a conversion rate between the two. Right. And now if I sort of understand what you're saying, what, what I think you're saying is we need to create conversion rates for all these, between these different forms of capital in terms of uh, financial numbers, which seems to suggest that you actually want to push the whole uh, financialization of all forms of capital even further. Now, that seems to be the message you're giving. Right. Uh, what I'm saying is that uh, financialization by itself is a neutral process, but what it has done so far is only help one of the forms of capital, which is financial capital, maximize returns to itself at the cost of the others. And we need mechanisms by which the financialization really helps restore uh, the other forms of capital, of which carbon credits is a good example. That's why, you know, the term financialization is, is tentative and, uh, uh, you know, we need, to, we need to move on from that. The, the important thing is we need a balanced investment across these five types of capital for us to have a more sustainable uh, and more inclusive growth. I've been told by Sri that uh, that was the last question, but since you said it after uh, the question was being asked, so maybe there's one more question I'll take. Yes, please. Uh, uh, actually, I just wanted this is question not off the, on the topic of just entrepreneurship as an entrepreneurship discussion in this forum. Um, the question actually goes into political entrepreneurship because a lot of discussions that have been through today uh, says that we need, we need, we need, we need a system, we need a policy, we need a, you know, whatever comes in. And we spoke about private-public partnership a lot, and public partnership means governments, and governance comes from politics. So um, if tomorrow there's a new political entrepreneurship, which actually brings in a new thought process and a new way of doing politics, will the so-called investor platform invest on that political party to bring about that change, which will then translate into the need that is actually required to bring about this all this uh, change at a real macro level? So um, are we actually talking about money being there to bring about a new really a policy thought, which is the crux of the problem here, because unless the policy and the governance support is there to the private enterprise, you know, both cannot sustain each other. Uh, I think it's a very good question, and it links a bit with what Sirish asked earlier. You know, we are in Mumbai, and without naming names, there's enough financialization of political capital that happens out of the city. All of us, you, all of us are deeply aware of it. In fact, if there is a serious problem right now with our, our governance, it is that our governance is very significantly interfered by the world of uh, business and finance. Yet, we've opted to be an elective democracy and you cannot go and fight an election out there, even if you did it at a very Spartan level, for anything, if you're standing for an MP, there are two million people voting for you. You have to go to lots of places. There are thousands of election booths that have to be manned, et cetera, et cetera. I've done the, the calculations. You cannot today stand for an MP election, even at a Spartan level. To move it from there to the realm of treating politics as a public good that all of us invest in, and then all of us benefit from, benefit from better governance. By the way, I, I realize that everything that I've said is sort of half-baked and would be very hard to, you know, pass muster even in a, in a graduate seminar, leave alone, you know, the kind of negotiations that happen at Kyoto Protocol. But all I'm saying is that the time has come for us to start taking the first step towards building these ideas. And, and if in the process, you know, some things are non-rigorous, we should make them rigorous. But the goal, I think, should be 
to put the world of finance in the place that it deserves, which is just one of the five types of capital. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, small memento on behalf of Sankal. Why? Instantaneous, huh? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um. <laughs>